it is truly an honor to be here today. So most of you are aware of what is endocrinology. It is the, it's a branch of medicine which deals with hormones. So my journey with endocrinology started way back in 2001. When I went to pursue my fellowship in endocrinology at one of the largest and prestigious medical schools of India in Mumbai. I was full of excitement and euphoria because getting admission there was a very tough task. But it was ephemeral. Very soon my excitement turned into trepidation. When I saw our outdoor patient department started with loads and loads of people with diabetes and on top of that many of our indoor wards were full of people with diabetes with myriad of dreadful complications like bad wounds, limb amputations, vision loss and heart and kidney disease. That was a very poignant moment for me and it made me terrified and petrified. I immediately decided to look back and analyze my family tree and I was astounded to know that I too was carrying those diabetes genes because many of my family members were having diabetes and obesity from both maternal and paternal side. I realized that sooner or later I too may fall victim to these morbid conditions if I did not do anything. That became the watershed moment of my life. And that day I decided that I will not sit back with an excuse of my genetics, but will try to find ways to counteract and mold my unfavorable genetics. I'm sure that if you also analyze your family tree, many of you may have family members with diabetes and obesity. Now diabetes and obesity are getting rampant and you, uh, do you know that one in every tenth adult is diabetic and one in every sixth adult is obese worldwide. In recent years I have seen a worrisome surge in prevalence of diabetes and obesity in people aged 15 to 30 years. And that is one of the most productive stage of life. You will be surprised to know that less than 50% of people with diabetes, they have their glucose control and other biochemical parameters under control. Now, here I am referring to the commonest type of diabetes, which is type 2 diabetes, where lifestyle play an important role. As diabetes and obesity, they coexist in most of the people, we call them together as diabetes. It's needless to say that during COVID-19 pandemic, people with diabetes had the highest morbidity and mortality. In my more than two decades of career as a health professional and endocrinologist, I have seen many well-educated and wealthy individuals also suffering with serious complications of diversity. So where is the problem? I'm here today to tell you three key findings of my more than 20 years of experience in this field and based on my observations and experiments. And these findings will compel you to think deeper and will impel you to take care of your health more than ever. So my first key finding is related to habits. So let me ask you two simple questions. How many of you brush your teeth every day? Please raise your hands. All of you, that's great. The second question, how many of you exercise every day? Not the same number. Because brushing has developed as a habit but exercise may not have. 
Human beings are creatures of habits. And habit is a function of subconscious mind. Our habit formation results from repeated conditioning of our subconscious mind to our family upbringing and atmosphere, our beliefs, our perceptions, and our surrounding environment. Our habits, they form our behavior patterns. And these patterns are saved in our subconscious mind. And these patterns may be healthy or unhealthy. And these patterns, they decide the fate and future of our health. The lifestyle disorders affecting many family members of a, um, you can say life, these lifestyle disorders are affecting many generations of a family because of persistence of these wrong behavior patterns superimposed on background of genetic predisposition. In my clinical practice, I have observed two types of patterns. One is performers, which is 20% of people, and second is non-performers, 80%, majority. The performers are the people who create healthy patterns. They believe in prevention. And even if they are being affected by any lifestyle disorders, they do their best to take care of it, to prevent the complications, and to enjoy good quality of life. While non-performers, are the people who struggle to change their patterns. So they accumulate more medications and complications over time, which seriously affects their quality of life. My second key finding is related to goals. So let me ask you, do, do you have goals about your career, about your finance and your family? Can you please raise your hands? Who is having goals? Very good. Most of you. Do you have goals related to your health? Please raise your hands. Not everyone. Definite smart goals are required in each and every area of life to achieve desired success. Life without goals is worthless. It is like driving a car without knowing the destination or playing soccer without a goalpost. Surely, most of us have goals related to our career, our family, and finance. But very few of us have health goals. So if you don't have health goals, you're not going to achieve and maintain good health. Now, when you have goals, the most important thing to achieve your goals is the defined process. And my third key finding is related to that. A serious scarcity of health wisdom. And that is one of the important reasons for an incessant increase in prevalence of lifestyle disorder like diabetes and obesity, despite having a revolutionary advancement and innovation in healthcare sector. All of you must have heard about the family wisdom, about financial wisdom, but very rarely about health wisdom, which is the rarest but the greatest of all. I started using this term five years back, and I defined it as an ability to understand the importance of good health early and using right information or knowledge to maintain it throughout our life. It also includes adopting newer ways or methods to change the wrong beliefs or patterns time to time by using consciousness engineering and creating new healthy patterns and behavior. Health wisdom has four important components. You can see here. The first and foremost, which is at the core of it, is the sound mental and spiritual well-being. And other three components are dependent on that. The sound mental and spiritual well-being is required to achieve perfect body-mind integration, which is a prerequisite to achieve great health. And sound mental and spiritual well-being can be achieved easily 
by practicing meditation, gratitude, forgiveness, compassion, and reflection for just three to five minutes per day. The second most important component of health wisdom is mindful eating, which has two parts, mindfulness and health part. The mindfulness part includes expressing gratitude for having food. Then eating your food without any distractions. That way you connect with food and that makes you think and realize that what you are eating is good for your health or not. As we say, think before you speak. I advise, mind before you eat. The second part of mindful eating is health part, where we eat as a, a healthy and balanced meal as per our age, gender, our activity, and our weight. Now here you can follow 80-20 rule. 80% of times you choose healthy option and 20% times you can choose less healthy options. And when you should ideally stop eating when you are 80% full. The portion size is the key here. Now I would like to give you an example. Many people they like to eat burger. Now if you see the standard chicken burger meal has around 1000 calories which is too much to process at one time. So when you want to eat chicken burger once in a while, if you are sticking to chicken burger alone, it has only 300 calories. But you, when you add fries and cola on top of that, you are adding fuel in the fire because those two together are more dangerous than burger alone. So portion size is very, very, portion control is very, very important. The third most important component of health wisdom is regular mixed type of exercise for 30 to 60 minutes. Walking alone does not help. We have to have walking plus stretching and weight training all together. Everyone knows that the lifestyle and exercise are the free and the best medicines, but easier said than done. In my clinical practice, the commonest reason for not doing exercise is feeling lazy, feeling bored, exercise is boring. And the second is I'm too busy to do it. Besides having the regular benefits, the exercise has one very, very important benefit. It boosts the performance of prefrontal cortex, which is responsible for our complex cognitive functions and our creativity and our behavior. And I consider exercise as a perfect antidote for device over usage induced compromise in prefrontal cortex function. Now, we, the, the device use has become inevitable in our life. But we can counteract, with, counteract that with health wisdom. The last component of health wisdom is maintaining a healthy weight. This may not be the ideal weight, but at this weight, you can prevent the physical and metabolic complications of overweight or obesity. Now, practicing health wisdom can help us in bending our genes in our favor by altering the behavior of our epigenome without altering the sequence of our DNA, and that is known as epigenetics. And this can help us and escaping from menace of lifestyle disorders. The perfect example of practicing health wisdom is Okinawa Island in Japan, where people live more than 100 years of age. They're healthy and happy. So based on these three findings, I would like to suggest three steps to prevent the further spread of this diabetes pandemic. The first is we all must have health goals, like any other goals. The second, we should impregnate those goals to our subconscious mind and visualize and affirm and visualize them every day. The third, using health wisdom, the greatest wisdom and the greatest gift as a process to achieve them. Bequeathing health wisdom to our children early can bring a paradigm shift 
in our predominantly career and grace-based upbringing to a holistic one. This can help them in creating healthy behavior patterns and can protect them from the sinister pandemic of diabetes and obesity. This should be done simultaneously at the level of schools and home, our family. The physical education classes should be mandatory till grade 12. In higher grades, you can reduce the duration, but don't discontinue it. Even 20 minutes of PE, a physical education class, can boost the creativity of children and productivity remarkably. And it should be a fun activity. It should not be a boring. Every day, there should be different type of activity, and it should be made interesting. The participation in any physical sport should be obligatory. We don't want to create everyone as a champion, but this way we are creating a habit and we are generating this belief that health is as important as other subjects. I see many young people suffering with these problems and I really feel bad for them. In my opinion, the foundation of success should be laid on good health. And on that, you can erect the other pillars of success in form of career, wealth, family, etc. They all should go hand in hand to have a happy and healthy life. Yeah. Our children are leaders of tomorrow, and I wish them utmost health, happiness, and success. And I have a dream. I want each and every one of them to become a health crusader for themselves and for their families to create healthy behavior patterns to prevent the further spread of these lifestyle disorders. To conclude, in my opinion, health, happiness, and success are not one-stop destinations. They are lifelong journeys. So let's make them our habits to live a world-class life. And I will stop here and will leave you with this question to ponder. And will tell you that if you want to live world-class life, you ought to have world-class health. Thank you very much.